Halloween a year ago. It had been a horrible year. A lot of things went wrong, left, right, front, and center. And after a particularly brutal year, I made a discovery on that day a year ago. I went to the admin building at my previous place of employment. And you know what they had? They had tacos. Something that they don't usually have. And I thought, okay, they have pretty good food. Why not give it a go? And I took said tacos. I want to go back and do some work. And you know what? Before that, I decided to visit some friends. And as I did, I, my hunger got the best of me. And so I took a bite of the tacos. And do you know what I found? Joy. These tacos were unlike anything else that I'd had. They were different. They stood out. They're quite possibly the best tacos. And I thought to myself, when they were finished, maybe I should get some more. But alas, they were gone. But that isn't the haunting part, per se. For me, is knowing that I won't have those specific tacos again. There's also something else. I was forever changed by said tacos. I was reborn that day a new man. How appropriate that it was on Halloween. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime, and I am your host as always, Professor Prime. Yeah, <laughs> and I got my lightsaber, you know, the classic Professor Prime lightsaber, green saber, golden hilt. And I'm probably going to put it down because it is going to distract me as I go along. But I'm probably going to pick it up from time to time because it is awesome. And I do like my lightsaber. But that being said, welcome to my Math in the World series. The series where I talk about how math relates to different things. Whether they be fields, uh, subjects, uh, franchises even. And recently, uh, sports. Like I did a video on math and football uh, pretty recently. Um, and actually, you know, I'll probably link that in the description because I really had fun with that and, and it was a little different than what I normally do. And, you know, I also take uh, suggestions and consider them and see if I want to do them in the future and if it's feasible and I feel like it's something that I have fun with. Yeah, I'd be up to it. But all of that being said, in this particular video, we're going to try something a little new. We're talking about math in a holiday. There's so many different options that you can go. And as evidenced by um, the title of the video, we're doing math in Halloween, which I, um, I'm pretty excited about. I was a little worried because I felt like I was losing my Halloween spirit because like at the time of the recording, you know, there's a lot going on in the world and no one's really able to do Halloween like they wanted to. But there are a lot of different options to explore with that, too. But without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so math and Halloween, there are several avenues that you could explore here. And I want to talk about like, you know, the day itself. I want to talk about some of the traditions that we currently have in society. You know, they vary from culture to culture, but um, I'll talk about a few to just give you all an idea of what I mean. Because honestly, the short of this video is that there is no Halloween without math. And I find that interesting. So yeah, let's talk about it. So while I do know that math is scary for a lot of people, I'm hoping that 
ironically enough, this video helps make someone a little less afraid of it. Because Halloween is something that's fun, right? And something that, as a society, we've come to really enjoy over time. And it's, it's very different from how it once was, how it originated, and I might leave some links in the description about its history. But that being said, if we look at the day itself, right, we know that it's October 31st. And so we have uh, the date for it. So we know where that comes from each year. And the year itself also is important in this, right? Because it's a measure of time. And, you know, you don't have time without math, right? And so just for us to keep track of things and have an idea of what's going on from day to day, math is important in that and definitely knowing what Halloween is. So that's a start. But I feel like it gets more fun than that because the next big thing, and this is where it starts to go into like different avenues, is there's a commercial aspect, right? A big commercial aspect. Halloween is insanely popular and there's a lot of money to be made. There's a lot of money to be made if you're in the candy business, if you're in the costume business, if you're in the story business, whether that be writing books, um, making movies, making games, it's all there. And as a society, we I think we still have like that obsession, ongoing obsession with zombies. So, and they show up in a lot of different things. <laughs> But, but let's get into it more with the money, right? So money, right? Money and math. You, you can't really separate those out these days, right? Like if you say you like money, but you don't like math, you're lying to yourself. You, you like math, just not what we typically like, uh, like, like we had in school, right? Um, and that's a big thing. Uh, so when you look at the commercial aspect, and you look at movies, for instance, movies make a lot of money. People enjoy them, myself included. Horror movies are a big thing. Horror movies on Halloween, a huge thing. And whether you're going to the theaters, which would not be a good idea now at the time of the recording, or whether you're staying at home and either buying or renting a movie or watching a movie that you already like um, bought, money was involved. It was involved in the purchase or rental of the movie. It was involved in the making of the movie. It was involved in the story structure of the movie, right? Because you only have so much time to tell your story in um, that movie. And you also have to like um, pay attention to your budget, pay attention to the um, special effects, uh, what your actors are making. Uh, and just balancing everything out. Like math is heavy with that. And you can make an argument for that in um, a lot of stories, right? Because with books is, uh, is different, but there are some similarities, right? You um, have a certain amount of pages uh, that you want to tell your story in, right? And there, there's something to be said about that. And with video games, you have the same sort of things that I talked about um, with like movies, but it's more than that too, because you have the characters in the game and you have all the code that goes behind that and you have uh the math that lies in the physics of that world the math of the gameplay and so it's in all of that and then just outside of like stories right like um you know we eat a lot of candy that day and whether you're someone who like wants to get candy for yourself or you wanted to get it for trick-or-treaters you're spending money that day or you know if you have like kids you're spending money that day um and that's un that's another thing and with all the food and like uh, candy that you're eating that day math was involved in making that often very precise math and i think that's interesting because like oh my god food and math i have a video on that too which i might leave, leave a link to but like it's, it's big in that and um I might do something on math and cooking in particular in the future because it gets crazy and I think that's pretty cool but um that being said yeah math is all over that joint so whether you're enjoying a story or you're eating food math was involved to make that happen and you're using math when you watch play or read your stories and when you eat your food it's just like we don't always think of it that way but I think it is important to note that there's math as it is, which is what we do. And then there's math in an academic sense where we're kind of taking what we do naturally and what the universe is doing naturally. And we're trying to make more sense of it. We're trying to, uh, you know, 
deduce more patterns or trying to make predictions about the future, say something about the present, talk about the past and all that, right? So it's more of an extension of what we naturally do. So if you're not a fan of the math that you learned in school, that's fine. You're a natural mathematician anyway. Go back to Halloween. Yeah, lightsaber. But yeah, <laughs> Halloween, I'm a little hyper for this video, it seems. I think it's because I finally found my Halloween spirit. Not that I'm being possessed by a Halloween spirit or that I'm haunted by a Halloween spirit. I really hope so on that last part. But, uh, so one of the other big things with Halloween is, of course, the costumes, right? And I think that's pretty cool because when you look into the costumes, right, you have to decide what you want to be that year, right? And there's a lot of math in that because it's, one, you want to make sure it's something that works with your body, right? Your height, your weight, etc. And, you know, depending on how complicated it is, you want to make sure all the parts are in place. You need to count that up. You need to make sure it was all there. And then just like um, with making those costumes, there's a lot of math and fashion. And, you know, there's one, just a lot of math in making certain patterns, making certain clothes. And then from a commercial standpoint, how much you get charged for all that. And so whether you're wearing a costume or making a costume, there's a lot of math in that too. And I think that's pretty cool. And then to go a little further, because I don't want these to get too long, I have a couple more things that I want to talk about. So one of the big ones is I think like um, trick or treating, which can be fun. And again, not great for the, this particular year, but with trick or treating, in addition to like the candy that you're eating and the costumes that you're wearing, that you know, you might have some strategy in it. You might know your neighborhood really well. You might know the people at those houses really well. You might know who gives you like, or who's gonna give you a lot of candy, right? And so then it's like, well, maybe you have a set time that you're doing your trick or treating, right? So you wanna say, well, okay, I wanna make sure I hit these houses and this neighborhood and i'm going to make sure I, I definitely talk to you know this neighbor that neighbor because they're definitely going to give me a good haul so you know it's kind of a game in a way it's like well can i get the biggest haul and is it a good haul like um so you want to consider all those things and um in addition to like the amount of candy that you're getting and like um the type and all that there's the whole logic and planning um that whole trick-or-treating experience and like um there's the whole idea of parties too, right? And again, not a great year for parties, but uh, at the time of this recording, but if you're into parties and you um, have a lot of friends who are doing a lot of different Halloween parties, you can use some strategy in that. Um, Cause you know, like back in my day, um, doing my younger days, <laughs> um, I had a lot of friends who really dig, or really dug Halloween and probably still do. Um, and, I wanted to go to like a lot of different parties. And so some years, like, you know, it just wasn't practical to do. Um, and I, I know when I was like, uh, definitely younger, uh, sorry, when I was younger, I did not have a car. So that was a tricky thing too, because it's just like, well, I guess I'm just going to one party then. Um, but if that wasn't the case, or if, you know, I was with a group of friends and we all had um, the idea to go to like different parties, we wanted to see like how long we would go to this party or how long we would go to that party, right? Like, um, you know, we had a good sense of the people who would be at the party. So it's like, okay, we want to get in as much as possible at these awesome parties. Cause there wasn't really like one that was just like, oh, this one's kind of crap. But if you're out there, that's something to consider. It's like, well, maybe I want to make an appearance. Maybe I want to get some like Halloween stuff or maybe I just want to see a few people. So maybe I spend some time at this party and then I'm, I got to travel to the other party and travel to the uh, party after that. And there's math and all that from like the travel time to what you get out of that experience. It's everywhere. And yeah, so I don't want to get this to get too long, but my big takeaway message is math is everywhere, even in places you don't think, because the truth of the matter is whether you're doing it in school or doing it professionally, that's not what determines if you're doing math or not. Math is happening outside of academia, it's happening outside of jobs, it's what's happening in the universe, it's how we talk about it. And with math and Halloween, you cannot have Halloween without math. 
And knowing that, if you're someone who likes Halloween, I hope that you find math a little less frightening, which is ironically what most people are looking for for Halloween. But then, mm, geez, words, where am I at today? I hope you had fun. I do hope you have fun. I had fun. <laughs> and I hope maybe, you know, you, you think about something in a different way. That being said, this has been my Professor Prime Math and Halloween episode. And, you know, I'll see you in the next one. Professor Prime out.